mic and wouldn't let me introduce her, but I always love to introduce Pastor Tanisha because I love her and respect her so much, but also because she's always doing so much out in the community, and I just want you all to know, you know, yes, she is our generation's pastor here and oversees our Yana ministry. Yes, she ministers with college students at Cal through Young Life. But you also know that she has also launched recently dialogue with young girls in the school, helping them to learn how to process their feelings, learn how to resolve conflict with one another. So she heads into the schools and facilitates this dialogue. What's it called again? She's working on the title, but she's doing it and she, her heart is so big. You know, she's never satisfied just to care for the kids who come to us. She wants to go to where the kids are. And so I have so much respect and love for her as a leader. Would you please welcome the spokeswoman of the Lord, Pastor Tanisha. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise God. All glory to Jesus. So good to see everybody on this last Sunday of American emphasized black history. But a lifelong history of black history in America will continue, amen? We will continue. So we thank you, everybody. You all look wonderful. It's our Blackout Sunday. We black it, black, black, black today. Yes, and if we stand in every, thank you for everyone who's standing in solidarity with us on this month. It's been incredible, right? It's just good to be together. Um, we have a, a, a word. I just want to open in a quick word of prayer, and we're going to get right to it. So, God, we thank you for each person, God, that you've brought here, every person watching online. Lord, we pray that you would open your word to our hearts. We want to see you, Jesus. We want to see you more than anything. God, will you be glorified in this place through what is, what is said and what is heard? God, will you get all the glory? Will you reveal yourself in new ways? God, will you put a new yearning in our hearts for you that we have not felt in a while? Will you fan the fires and stoke the flames, oh God, that you have put inside of us? Have your way on today. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're ready for a word from God, can you clap your hands and give God a hand praise? You all look so beautiful today. Amen. We are, um, we, are, we have been following the lectionary, and I always want to say what the lectionary is because a lot of people, when I didn't grow up with the lectionary, I was like, what is a lectionary? But um, we are following the lectionary all this year. So if you want to look it up, Google lectionary. And it's a thing where all churches around the world are all following the same scriptures. And if you follow these same scriptures for two years, you could read through the whole Bible. Or your church would have went through the whole Bible in two years. It's really amazing. So the lectionary passage is, uh, today is about uh, the transfiguration. All right, because we're heading into Lent, which starts on Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. So we're heading into a new season. So today is Transfiguration Sunday. And this is a really great Sunday. I really love the story. I know a lot of you probably heard it a lot. It's the story when Jesus took a, about three of his disciples with him. They went up a mountain. Now, they went up that mountain with, like, homie Jesus. Like, he's our homie, our friend. He's been hanging with us. We, you know, we camp out. We do the things. We follow this guy. He was the homie Jesus. He was this guy that said, follow him. And we was like, cool, we down. And then they got on this mountain. And then they saw Jesus in a whole different light. They saw God as the divinity as divine. They saw him for who he really is. They got a real glimpse of, of Jesus as God. Something happened when they got on that mountain. And it's such a great story. You can read it for yourself. And I, I, it comes out of Luke. It's in a, a, a few of the Gospels, but it's usually someone's account. But this is a great passage that we're going to read from the lectionary. It's from 2 Peter. And it's 2 Peter 1, 16 through 19. And I love this because it's like Grandpa Peter, right? It's his firsthand account of what happened that day. See, in the Gospels, we just kind of get the Gospel account. But this is Grandpa Peter writing a letter, giving you his first. It's like you're interviewing Peter. Peter, what happened on the mountain that day? 
And this is what he says. We're in verse 16. It says, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard the, this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts or in your hearts. Isn't that a great verse? That is, that's Grandpa Peter looking back on what happened that day when he went on the mountain with Jesus. His first-hand account, and I want to put special emphasis on verse 16. It says, uh, we do not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but this is the key, but we were eyewitnesses. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So today we're going to talk about eyewitnesses. Yeah. Come on, tell your neighbor, eyewitnesses. Eye tell the other one you just ignored, eyewitnesses. <laughs> Say eyewitnesses. We want to talk about this. I believe God is looking for some eyewitnesses yeah. today. Yeah. I believe that's what he's looking for. I don't know how many, do we have any people in law here? Do we have any law people? Oh, look, at yes, one guy should have. So, yeah, when you're in, the, you're, you're in law, you know, uh, witness, eyewitness law and the legal definition of it, you, Winter, you can check me. An eyewitness is defined by an event, a person who has seen something or something and can bear witness to the fact this is something he or she directly observes and will later be asked to provide information about. I'm talking about eyewitnesses. This is what I believe Jesus is looking for from us today. As Pastor um, Erna mentioned, we did get to go to the African American Museum of History and Culture in Washington, D.C. Sister Winter is one, wearing a wonderful sweatshirt of it, and I'm, I love it. I'm going to jack her for it after <laughs> church. Um, but that place was amazing. If you haven't gotten a chance to go, please put it on your bucket list. You gotta go there. It's the, yeah, I was literally there all day. It opened at ten. They closed at five twenty, and I was like doing sprints, trying to fi trying to figure it, finish it off. But it was so amazing because you get to see all these things from history, from our history, things that all the documentations, the photographs, the replicas. They were. It was incredible. But you know what? What struck me? All these things were history. These are all people who lived in the moment. Those are, it's great for us to look back and see it and be like really appreciate it and we need it. We need to know what happened that brought us here to people who we can stand on their shoulders, our ancestors. We need to know these things, but we weren't there. We weren't an eyewitness. How many people know God is looking for eyewitnesses today? People who will make history today. So that we don't just have to look at all these pictures from yesteryear, but we could be a part of it right now. How many want to be a part of history today? When history is written, will it be said that you just sat on the sidelines or that you participated? Because even the people who are doing evil, it's the same difference. If you're doing the evil or if you're just sitting around and spectating, it's the same difference. It's time for eyewitnesses. Raise your hand if you're signing up. Like, yes, I would love to be an eyewitness. I want to be an eyewitness training program because I want to be able to see. I don't want to just say what I've heard. I don't want to tell my kids and my grandkids or my nieces and nephews who's come behind me what I heard or what I just saw on social media. See, we live in a day of technology where everything is easily accessible. You could feel like you were there, but you weren't there. But that God has put something on each of our hearts. 
something you have a heart and a passion for. And it is time for us to get out there and make history and be an eyewitness to the thing that God put in your heart. You want to be in the thick of it. Like when they write the narrative for 2020, like our pictures are on the front line of what happened. How many people down for that movement? Yeah. All right, all right. I believe y'all. I believe y'all. So let's talk about eyewitness training. Y'all already raised your hand. You in it. Let's go. We're going to do it. Eyewitness training. So what does it take, according to this verse that we just saw, what is Peter saying? He was an eyewitness who he didn't have to tell anybody. Like It wasn't like maybe what he heard second. He saw it for himself. And this is time for us to start taking our faith in this manner where we see it for ourselves. No longer what grandma told us, what the pastor told us, but what we see for ourselves. My question is today, what is your view of Jesus? What is your view of Jesus currently? Is he still the homie Jesus? You know, you just like, hey, he cool. Like, we, you know, me and Jesus, we good. He know my heart. Or are you going up that mountain with him? Is, what is the narrative you have of him? Are you subscribing to the evangelical Christian Jesus that has been painted for us? The white Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes? Are we subscribing to that Jesus? Are we, are we su subscribing to the Jesus of white supremacy who holds down whole groups of people? Like Pastor Mike said, that you could go to church in the daytime and in the afternoon you go to a lynching. Is that the Jesus we're subscribing to? Or are we, will we subscribe to Jesus of the Bible, the one who, who healed the sick, the one who loved the poor, the one who hung out with the unruly, and the, the one who was just down in the thick of it, having dinner with the no goods and the gangsters and the hoodlums? The one who was the enemy of the state, the one who spoke to powers, who engaged powers, who is that the Jesus who you what view of Jesus do you have this morning? Do you subscribe to the meek and lowly Jesus? The one who's just so tender and mild? Or is that the one that we're which Jesus are you subscribing to today? Because the, the we've been told a narrative that's not true that we have to subscribe to. So I need to ask each of you personally, which Jesus do you subscribe to? So I'm talking about the Jesus of the Bible. <laughs> the Jesus who has not been put through filters in order to oppress people. That's the Jesus I'm talking about. That's the one. So let's talk about this eyewitness training. What is Peter telling us? How can we be like him, a part of the movement? He saw Jesus for himself. He knew him for himself. He's seen it. He saw it. If you were to tell him, if someone were to ask you, what is your view of Jesus, would you be able to have a firsthand account? Or would you be like, well, you know, my grandma always said. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> Here we go. First thing Peter says is that we are to receive a prophetic word. A prophetic word. He said that we have received this prophetic word from heaven. And I love this because he's speaking of when um, the voice from heaven, you know, if you were to read the original story, Peter didn't tell on himself all the way. Because it was Peter who put his foot in his mouth and God had to be like, uh-uh, Peter, hush. So he didn't tell the whole story. He's right, like, didn't want to admit that part. Like, I was the one that kind of spoke out of turn. If you remember the story, they were up on a mountain. Jesus was transfigured. He was in white, dazzling clothes. They was like, oh, my gosh, who is this? Look at Jesus with his fresh new fit on. They was looking at him. And then there was Moses, and there was Elijah. And Peter was the one who didn't know what to say and just started talking because he didn't have nothing to say and say, we should make a tabernacle here. We should build it and they should stay with us and we should stay here forever. And then the voice from heaven came and said, hey, 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 hey. Shh, 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 shh. Calm your nerves. Um, Peter, um, <laughs> calm your nerves. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. That's the voice that, and Peter called that a prophetic word. Yeah. And now this is very important. Y'all stay with me because this was before Jesus was crucified and raised again. So we are still in the pre 
uh, resurrection day. So God was speaking audibly. He was like, hey, this is my guy. Listen to him. But now we have an advantage. I talk about this all the time. We have an advantage of being post-resurrection people where God doesn't have to necessarily speak from heaven in a loud voice. He's speaking right here in our hearts. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God speaks to you prophetically? Do you believe that the, you have access to the very heart and the mind of God? He speaks to you directly now. We don't have to wait for all the big signs. And a lot of us is like, God, I need a sign. I need a thing. Do something. Let a yellow car pass me if you mean yes. Like, we don't, we don't have to do all that anymore because you have this prophetic voice speaking. If you believe in Jesus and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have a prophetic voice inside of you. And I love what the prophetic voice always says. It says, it always points to, this is my son. This Jesus. Remember this Jesus, not that Jesus. Not that, what, not that uh, colonial oppression Jesus. But this Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm with. Whenever God speaks to you, he will always be pointing you back to Jesus. He will always be pointing you to his son. He will always be pointing to a way where Jesus can be glorified in your life. Anybody ready to hear a prophetic voice? Because we've, we've misused the prophetic. We want it for, I need a car. Do I have a check coming in the mail? Who's my spouse? Who's my boo? Like, when, where should I apply for a job? Like, we've turned it into this other thing when really Jesus, God really wants to talk to you a lot about Jesus. He wants to show you who he is, and how much he's beloved, and how much you should listen to him. This Jesus. Everybody say, this Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Let's go back to the verse. That's the first thing Peter wants you to know, if you're going to be an eyewitness, is that you're going to receive a prophetic word from God. It's a word that only God can give you. It's something that you know that you know that you know that no one else had to tell you. Anybody ever experienced that before? Be like, how you know that? How you know to do that? I just know. I received something from God. But remember, when you receive it, it's always going to point back to Jesus. It's never for our glory, never for our, you know, come up. All right. He also said, um, in, uh, that was prophetic training. And then he also said something very important. It's in verse, um, verse 19. It says, and we have a prophet, prophetic word more fully confirmed because now we have the Holy Spirit. We are post-resurrection people to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. This phrase was so amazing to me. The next thing he wants us to do is pay attention. This is so, he made it, look at the correlation. At first I didn't get it, I was like, huh, interesting, Peter. He said, as, pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Hmm, how do you pay attention as a lamp? I was like, hmm, interesting analogy. I'm not sure. But then, you know, the Lord began to reveal it to me. Pay attention as to a, a lamp shining in a dark place. When we start looking at the news, when you start watching Fox and MSN and all these things, hopefully you're not watching too much of that foolishness. When we start listening to all the alerts that come up, you see all the things that's going on in our country. You start looking at all the documentaries that's talking about all these ways that they've been plotting and planning the demise of black people for centuries. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to start getting heartbroken. Yeah. I had to take so many deep breaths and times of meditation. I had to put in gospel music in my ears as I was going through the museum because it's, uh, it's overwhelming at times. And just being honest, it's, it's overwhelming. Sometimes you just wonder, Lord, what is it? What is it about black people? Like, why do they hate us so much? Why so much evil? Why was so much done to us over this century? All the, all the evil, all the plotting and planning and roadblocks and, and policies. And I mean, it was in, it was five floors of just like, why? 
why we can't just live, Jesus? Why we can't just be great? Why they just want us let us be great? Woo! So I, now, I, because the way I feel like that, I understand why he says pay attention. Because it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to start looking at all the things around you. It's easy to start getting disheartened. Like, oh, man, every time on the news, like, again, if I see one more police brutality video, if I see one more shooting, if I see one more news flash about mass incarceration or the immigration crisis, or this, it just becomes overwhelming. Anyone feel like that with me? Like, Lord, God, what is it? That's why he said, pay, you got to pay attention because it's easy to get distracted. Sometimes guys have like, hey, 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 yeah. over here, over here, uh, uh, uh. You have somebody who wasn't paying attention, you try to tell them, I'm a mama, folk, 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 right here, bring it in. Pay attention, I love this, he says, as a lamp shining in a dark place. And when I started hearing that and read, I started getting joy on the inside because even if you can look at our ancestors as a people, even through all the evil and oppression, God uses us as light yes. in dark places. You have to pay attention that you don't get so distracted about what's around you that you forget who you are. God has put us here for a reason, and you are to be a light even in dark places. And some would say this country right now is a dark place. Even in this country, God is still calling on some faithful people who will shine in the midst of darkness. Come on, who will still let your light shine? Who will still let God be seen in them? Even in the hurt, even in the disappointment, even in the oppression, will you still be a light? Will you still be available for God to shine through you? This is who God's looking for, a people who will shine in the face of darkness. Because we know that light always defeats darkness. Always. We always say this. You can light a little bitty match in a big warehouse that's dark, and who wins? The light every time. Will you be that light? Will you be a light? Will you sign up for the light program of the Lord? And say, God, I'm here. It's a lot going on around me, but I am going to pay attention. And this is why that voice came from heaven. Hey, 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 hey. Just like I had to tell Peter, you're doing a lot. Right here, boo boo. Pay attention because this is my son and whom I well please. See, we got to always keep our focus on Jesus. You know, at, at times, and I have to bring myself, that's why I love the songs that we sung today. We serve an everlasting God. And it's, uh, it's sometimes we get stuck in time and place in history because we feel like, because you're born right now, like this is the greatest injustice that the world has ever seen. But you know what? There's been centuries and centuries and years and decades and millennia of evil empires, of evil kingdoms that have come and have gone, that have rose up and that have failed. And now we are living in this age. God has have us all here of all the times of all of history. We have been born right now, not to look at the age we're living in and discourage and disparity, but to say, you know what? I serve an everlasting God who always wins. Can I, can I remind you that we're on the winning team? And even though it looks dark, and even though we feel discouraged sometimes, and even though we look at our history and our past, and we be like, God, why? We're not the alone. We have a cloud of witnesses. We have people who have gone through centuries and centuries of oppressions through all kind of kingdoms and uprisings, kingdoms even more brutal than the one that we're living in today. But God has always had a faithful people. Come on, he's always had a remnant. He's always had a group of people who will shine bright for him. Will that be you? Will you be a witness to what he's doing today? He's had to birth for this reason. You're here in 2020. That's crazy. Perhaps you're here to be a burning light. 
Perhaps you're here to be an eyewitness to what God is going to do in this earth, what God wants to do in this country. Perhaps this is the reason why you're here. We're going through eyewitness training. Y'all still on board or did you quit? Y'all still on? All right. Y'all didn't leave the training yet. All right. This is the last thing. We have a prophetic word from God that this is the son. We're following the right Jesus. How many know we're following the right Jesus? We on the right side of history. We following in the right God with the right gospel, with the right truth, reaching the right people. Right? And then we're going to pay attention. We're not going to be distracted, but we're going to be like, we're going to be like this burning lamp that's shining in darkness. That's who we're doing. And then the third thing is that we're just going to wait for it. Right? You ever see that? Wait for it. Those videos on Instagram, and you gotta watch them like two minutes before, like, it's gonna be funny, I know. I have to wait. They're saying it's gonna be funny. But look, God wants us to wait for it. I love verse 19. It says, and we have a prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Now, just sit in that for a minute. He's saying, like, oh, uh, uh, wait for it until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Now, that was a lot. I was like, why? That's a lot of analogies and days and dawns and morning stars. What is a morning star? Jesus, how you like a morning star? I, don't, I was, you know, going on all on the internet. I'm trying to uh, figure this out. And um, it, when, I, when I found the, the meaning of it, it was so beautiful. God, when sometimes in our lives, we have to wait for it. A lot of times, if in this microwave generator, we want justice now. We want things to happen now. We want our answers now, Jesus. We signed up for the right now program. We want the suddenly ministry. We want God to do it. And there are some things in our lives that come in increments. Yeah. There are some things even our ancestors knew that sometimes your blessings will be incremental. That's not a good, we, we, we don't live in that narrative anymore. Sometimes you just, we, we, we want things right away. We don't have that, we haven't built that muscle to see it come for generations. A lot of people who were marching, a lot of people who are standing for justice, a lot of our ancestors, um, always thought about the next generation. Yeah. I'm doing this so that my grandkids can vote. Wow. I'm doing this, I'm gonna stand up today so that my kids can play here. Right. I'm gonna do this right now so that my kids can go to school. Like it was always thinking about that. I think we've lost a little bit of that because we just want it collectively now. We've been waiting all these years. And, but sometimes things happen in measurements. God doesn't remember we serve an everlasting God. He got time. He works in generations. We work in years and minutes. Like, I only got five years, Lord. I want to see this out. I want to see this vision in five years. He's like, no, no, no. I'm an everlasting God. So what if you switched your paradigm from right now, Jesus, to like, okay, God, I'm going to build and plan for the people who are coming behind me, yeah. right? Um, I want to talk to you about the morning star really quick. I have to read it because I'm not that smart. I can't be like, and I totally know the morning star. Okay, the morning star, Venus is a planet. Y'all knew that? Okay, okay, good. Venus is a very bright star. It is the only celestial body besides the moon that is bright enough to cast a shadow on Earth. It had two different names in the ancient pagan world, and it is seen in the sky twice a, twice a day. When the sun came up in the morning, it was called the morning star. And when the sun set in the evening, it was called the evening star. Remember that the evening star? You used to have songs about it? I don't know. Okay. This makes it all more fitting as the name of Christ, who is called the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So this star, whenever there's a, supposedly, I've never really seen this. Maybe we live in the city lights. We don't really see it like that. But according to science, 
There is a, a, a planet, Venus, that shines even before it dawns. You can see it in the morning. Even before the, the sun comes up, you can see Venus shining. It looks like a star, but it's not. It's a planet. And then in, in the evening, as the sun is going down, it's still there. Jesus reckoned himself as the morning star. He said, this is what I'm like. I rise before the sun. I'm always shining. I'm shining before you even know that things are rising. I'm already, I've already risen on things that you are waiting on. It also says before the star, the morning star, which is actually the planet Venus, derives its name from the fact that it appears before sunrise. It, it appears and therefore heralds the coming of the new day when it's still dark. This is exactly what Christ does. He is the light shining in darkness, announcing the coming kingdom of God. He is the morning star. He is the constant light. Stars twinkle, but Venus doesn't. The light of Christ never fails. It never fails. He's that constant light. He's like, no, no, we're going to wait for it to rise in our heart. Now, this is the thing we want to challenge ourselves at the end of the sermon. What do you need to for God to do? How do you need to see Jesus rising in your situation? Like the hope that we talked about. The confident hope that even though you don't see it, even though it looks dark right now, do you have that confident hope that God is already rising up in your situation. Do you believe that he is rising up for our people, that he's been rising up for our people? How do you think our ancestors even made it to this? How do, how, I was walking through the museum, and I was like, it's a wonder that I'm here. How do I even exist? Because our people believed in this Jesus. See, a lot of people are like, how do you believe in Christianity? Oh, my gosh, it was a tool of the oppressor. Okay, yeah, that was their Jesus. But our ancestors believed in this Jesus. How do you think we stand in here? They called on his name. They believed that one day it would be a better day. They believed that he was the morning star and that he was rising in their hearts, even though it was still dark. Even though it's still dark. How many people have some dark situations? You watch the news and it looks dark. You read the headlines, it looks dark. But do you have that confident hope that it's rising? That he's rising. He's rising like the dawn. So we're going to wait for it. How many people are going to commit to waiting for it? It's important how you wait. Now you can wait mad and sad and want to fight everybody. We all know people like that. That's how they, that's how they lead in the movement. They mad at everybody, but did you know my brother? Like they, 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 they on that side. It's important how you wait. Or will you wait with a prophetic word from God? Will you wait as a burning light? Will you wait knowing that he's going to rise? Oh, God's coming. That confident hope like, oh, yeah, it looks bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, they acting crazy out here. It's a lot of evil. But God, but God is still good. But God's still going to use us. But God's going to use us to, to be a light in this, in this country. God's going to use us to bring, bring help, bring hope. Yeah. Eyewitness training. Y'all still in? Yeah. All right, let's have you stand. Yeah. If you win eyewitness training, come on, let's stand. If you could play that, um, I will remain again. Just want us to have a time of prayer. We have questions. The question is that, you know, as we're just, we're wrapping up this time, what is your current view of Jesus? How do you see him? What narrative are you seeing Jesus in? Because it might be time to go up that mountain and see Jesus for who he really is. To see him as the bright and morning star. Whew. You know, our, our ancestors had a lot of songs about that. The bright and morning star. He's the lily of the valley. Ferris of 10,000. How do you see him? Now, I'm not talking about what your grandma told you about him, what Pastor Mike has told you about him. 
What is your opinion of Jesus? Do you believe that he is strong and mighty? Do you believe that he is completely in control, even of this chaos that sometimes seems like our country? Even over our history, I had to reckon with that. Do you believe that he is still Lord over our history? And even as our history, as our people, of our people? Do you believe that he is the beloved, the chosen one of God who has come to liberate and set captives free? That that's always been his will? (laughs) It's always been his will for liberation. Liberation has always been his plan. That's That's why they cut it out the Bible so we couldn't read it. So not that Jesus, I'm talking about this Jesus. (laughs) And also, what actions can you take to move from a spectator to a witness? To move from just watching videos on on Instagram, to move from just, you know, sharing, oh, did you see this? To really get it out there and doing the action. If they were to take a picture of you and they're going to put it in history and museums for times to come, would your face be there? Will you be in the crowd? Would you be in the movement? Will you be the one writing? Will you be the one making posters? Will you be the one packing up lunches? Will you say that I was there? When your kids and your grandkids be like, Grandma, what's granddad? Were you there? Oh, yes, I was. Packing up lunches, doing whatever they needed me to do. I was cleaning the bathrooms. Yes, I was there. Not that I just watched it and it was cool. And, you know, and, uh, my, my fear is that a lot of times I don't want to be lulled into a place of com- uh, pl- complacency where it seems like the people of the past were, where they just thought that's the way things should be. Oh, it's Jim Crow. That's just the way it should be just segregation. It's just the way it is. No, no. I want us to be like, no, we're never going to be complacent with people not living as human beings or not having dignity of a human being or being second class citizens or being, or we have a whole group living right outside on the freeway. I'm not happy with that. We're going to do things about it. We're going to see the humanity and the imago Deo and everyone. So what will it take for us to not just be a spectator and be like, yeah, that's wrong, mm-hmm, sure is. But to really be in a part of movements that are already happening. And thirdly, how can you shine bright even in the darkness of this country? You know, this country is only 400 years old. It's not a, it's, not a, a, it's a fairly new nation compared to Europe and all these other places. Like kingdoms have come and kingdoms have gone. So we cannot be so discouraged like we are in the worst of it all. Like we serve a God who is strong and mighty and he will use us to still speak to powers, to speak truth to powers. He wants to use us to do that, to confront evil. That's what our job is for. We are committing to being burning lamps, eyewitnesses of his glory. And it all goes back to Jesus. It all points back to him who is the Savior, who is the liberator of our souls. So let's just have a word of prayer. God, we praise you. We thank you. We worship you because you are the great I am. You are the bright and morning star. You are the one who is rising up within us. Oh, God, rise within us, oh, God, even in darkness. God, we feel it in our hearts. We feel hope rising. We feel joy rising. We feel peace rising, even right now. Can you receive that? If you've been discouraged, and if you've even been uh, just shaking your head to everything that's going on around you, will you just begin to lift your hands and let God arise in you? Let him calm you with his love. Let him reassure you that he is God and he is God all by himself and that he needs no help and that he is always in control and he has seen everything and he will reckon everything and he will use us. Come on, if you want to be used by the Lord, will you just take this time to say, God, I want to be used by you in this present age. You have me here for a reason. God, I want to be an eyewitness to what you're doing. I want to see it up close and personal. I want to hold it. I want to touch it. I want to be a part of whatever you're doing. God, whatever you're doing in this season, oh God, don't do it without me, God. Don't do it without me, Jesus. You do it, God. Have your way. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Thank God. As we close our time, if you have, uh, if anyone's here and you are looking for a church home, you're looking for a place to be, you want to join this community, you want to be seen and loved and belong, we want to open up the doors of the church to you. If there's anyone here who would love to be a part of the way, we would love to tell you how to get started on that journey. Is there anyone here? Amen. We are a big one, a big happy family of belonging. Amen. Well, we want you to enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Hopefully, you're going to head out to the Black Joy Parade because it's super lit. Oh, my gosh. It's so much love. Oh, it's the best. I love the Black Joy Parade. So make sure you make it out there. We have a lot of announcements. We have uh, movies coming up. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Erna to close us in prayer.